Hey everybody, this is an initial review of the LG V30. So the reason I'm calling this an initial review is because this is a pre-production unit provided by LG. That means the software on this is not final. But to be honest, I've been using this phone very heavily for like 6 days now and everything feels final to me. So let's just get on ahead with the review. So let's talk hardware first. The phone has a glass back as you can see. 4 colors, blue, lavender, black or silver. I like black the best. So it's a very minimalistic design. Headphone jack on the top, volume rocker on the left, USB-C port and a single speaker grill on the bottom, and the right side just has a SIM card slot. So by now you already know the V30 has an OLED display, and it's curved a little bit, but not as drastic as the Samsung Galaxy S8. When I flip the Galaxy S8 around in my hand like this, because the phone is so curved, it almost feels like it's round. But with the V30, that's not the case. When I'm doing this, I can still feel the sides very clearly. LG's engineers designed this on purpose because they think that will give you better grip of the phone. So now, about that display. What more is there to say, really? If you've seen LG's TVs, you know the OLED technology is amazing. I mean, look at the colors on this. CL's looking pretty damn good there, too. You know, colors are lush, viewing angle is good, and the phone gets bright enough for even outdoor use, but you have to turn brightness to 100%. When you turn on the camera and the viewfinder takes up the whole screen, I mean, it just looks amazing. Look. So the secondary display of the V10 and V20 is gone, kinda. There's a software version that does the exact same thing. You can use it on the home screen or even within an app. So you can set um, shortcuts to go into apps or like contacts and stuff. So the fingerprint reader on the back works immediately. It's accurate. And you can even lock the phone with your face or your voice. So the two camera layout that LG has been doing since the G5 returns, but the main camera has been upgraded to an f1.6 aperture. That's very impressive. The lowest in mobile right now. The camera app is easy to use. You can adjust brightness or flip to the selfie lens with just one hand. The second camera is 120 degree wide angle and LG's even fixed the software a bit so to eliminate that distortion fisheye effect. So the manual camera mode is back. You can adjust shutter speed, ISO, white balance. It's just very useful to manipulate the image to look the way you want. And LG even lets you do this in video. Most smartphones only let you do it in photo mode, not when you're shooting a video. So here's a sample video I shot in manual mode. Look at me adjusting how the clouds and the sky the lighting look. So the V30 also brings a new Cine video mode. Um, it basically lets you shoot more cinematic videos. So there are a lot, there's a lot of preset filters that you can pick from, but the best feature by far is point zoom. Basically, it lets you lock into a portion of the frame and then just zoom in to that part, even as you're pulling the camera away or tilting away. You can do this on any other smartphone right now. So here's a sample video I shot in uh, point zoom look at me zooming into the upper right corner into the street sign okay let's look at some photo samples so lg put a glass lens on the v30 this is very rare in smartphones because they usually use plastic lens lg says that using a glass lens will produce more accurate colors to be honest i can't quite tell the difference but the shots do look amazing with great dynamic range so this shot here, I shot with a manual focus. Look at how clear and detailed it is. So low light photography, the V30 excels obviously with that f1.6 aperture. So all these photos were shot in Amsterdam or Berlin. You know, perfect place to test a new camera, right? The sunset here looks amazing. The colors are completely insane. Now let's look at um, the difference between a normal shot and a wide angle shot. So as mentioned earlier, LG's fixed that software, so now the wide angle shot looks a lot more natural instead of that distorted fisheye look. So this is another normal shot, and now this is another wide angle. You get a lot more in the frame, right? So here's like one more photo sample. Now I'm going to move on to video samples. Okay, testing the selfie camera on the LG V30. Hello, can you hear me? I was recording in 4K right now, 4K resolution. So 
So this is a test video at 1080p. Um, quite dark right now. It's 9 p.m. in Amsterdam. So when you switch to a wide-angle lens, the lighting suffers a lot. But when you keep it at normal, it's okay. Let's walk a little bit. So the OIS don't seem to work that good. A little bit shaky. So LG's packed a lot of features into the V30. So the always on display still has shortcuts that you can swipe and turn on flashlight and all of that. And LG's packed four hi-fi DACs into the V30. So this is an audiophile device. The DACs are like ESS Saber. I mean, I'm not an audiophile, so I don't even know what the numbers mean. So with a Snapdragon 835 and four gigs of RAM, the phone is very snappy. In six days of use, I never encountered any lag. LG software is actually quite useful. I like that when you long press on an icon, it pops up these shortcuts. This is a feature from Google, but you know, LG implemented it into its own software. I also love that you can double tap on the screen to turn the display on or off. When I use other phones and I have to press a button to lock the phone, it just feels so outdated. So now battery life, 3,300 milliamp battery. It's almost enough to last me a full day. As you can see, I have 29% battery life right now, having used the screen for two hours and 45 minutes. So there are a few issues with the phone that drives me insane. The Galaxy S8 on the left, look, I just hit the navigation buttons to take advantage of that full screen. On the V30, you can't hide the button. So when you're watching a full screen Instagram story, the button is just there wasting space. The same goes for YouTube videos. On the S8, you can fill the entire screen with the YouTube video, but on the V30, you cannot. So there's just complete waste of space on the left and the right, like those black bars. You know, the phone has a one hand mode, but as you can see here, it, it, it takes like three tries to get it to work. It's like a hit or miss. And the app drawer is also really weird. Now, look, I have a Google folder that I made myself on home screen with my own apps. But now if you go on the app tray, there's another Google folder in there with different apps. I have no idea how that crap got on there. So, you know, overall, the LG V30 has a couple of flaws, but it's still a very great phone. I think that screen, that display is just beautiful. And if you listen to high quality music or you're a content creator, you shoot videos and take a lot of photos, the V30 can offer you what most other phones cannot. Thanks for watching.